So, you guys, I'm assuming, are all using the VM in some variety. Uh, my screen's going to look a little bit different than yours because I'm actually running a native Linux install and not the VM, but the gist should be the same. We're going to start just by, for those of you that maybe have never used it before, just taking you through some of the raw Ubuntu basics to make sure you can at least shut things down and start and stop programs and all of that good stuff that I'm sure you're all used to doing in Windows or OS X or whatever other heathen land you happen to come from. So on the VM, you guys will have this by default. Mine auto appears when I mouse over here. But we have on the left what's called the launcher bar. This is essentially how you access any of the programs on the VM. You probably figured this out already because you clicked on it and it did something. So the main program we're going to be concerned with tonight is called the terminal. It's this black one here. It essentially is our window into the command line interface, which we'll be getting into in a moment. Uh, your guys' is, like I said, will look a little bit different than mine, but you also have access to browsers on here if you want to use Google Chrome or use Firefox. The programs are the same on Linux as they are on OS X or on Windows. There shouldn't be a lot of difference. Um, there's also a link here to some editors to launch Emacs, to launch Genie. Uh, again, we're not going to be talking a lot about those editors tonight. We will cover them in subsequent sessions. If you want to get to something that's not on the bar here, that's what this little thing at the top does. If you click on it, It'll bring up a search interface. You can search for files. You can search for other programs. You can see if anything embarrassing appears in my search history. Um, and you can basically pull up anything else you might want to get to on the machine from this interface. So if you have a setting you want to change, I mean, you can search for various settings, so on and so forth. This search interface is kind of your basic GUI window into using anything on the machine. You can also, the other thing you're probably going to care about, uh, up here in the upper right hand corner is this little gear. This is how you start up and shut down the virtual machine. I know it's tempting when you're running a virtual machine to just X out the window that it's in and close it that way. Don't do that. Um, it'll lead to probably breaking your virtual machine at some point. Just closing the virtual machine without properly shutting it down is akin to pulling the power plug on your computer to shut it down. So when you're done using the virtual machine, don't just close the window. Go to the gear on the virtual machine. Go to shut down. That will shut down just the virtual machine. It won't affect your computer you're running it on at all. It will shut down the virtual machine. It will close the window. When you're ready to start again, you can start it back up. Uh, so yeah, pro VM tip. If you're just going around closing the windows, you will probably break something eventually. Although you might get away with it for a little while. Hopefully, most of you guys have done this already, but the virtual machine does have Dropbox running on it. I would highly encourage you to use Dropbox to save your files. Uh, every time you start up the VM, until you set it up, it'll pop up a screen prompting you about how to set up Dropbox. It's not required. You can uninstall it if it's annoying you and you don't want to use it. But if you do want to use it, it provides a good way to essentially back up everything you do on the virtual machine to the internet, which will be important if you ever break your virtual machine and you want to keep your files back. Um, so once you get Dropbox set up, it's pretty simple. All of you have what's called a home folder. It's sitting right here. That's the equivalent of like your user folder in Windows or OS X. It's essentially the top level folder that stores all of your documents, all of your files, all of your music, all of anything else you might have. If you open up your home folder in the GUI, my machine is so fast. And demo fail. That's embarrassing. Well, normally if you opened up your home folder, it would pop up a screen. It's very similar to what you'd see on Windows. It's going to have subfolders inside of it. Once you set up Dropbox, one of those folders inside of it will be called Dropbox. If you just save your stuff in there, you should be good to go. I am going to restart this. And hopefully that doesn't happen to you on a regular basis. All right. So as soon as this restarts, we're pretty much going to get into the command line interface because I'm sure you can figure out most of the rest of the click on pretty things in Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu, which is what the that's the official name of the operating system that's running on your virtual machine. It's a type of Linux. Linux is a very old operating well, dates back to the early 90s. Um, and then came out of the operating system called Unix before that. Linux, unlike Windows or OS X, has a lot of different flavors. Ubuntu is one Linux flavor distribution. There's also a whole bunch of other ones out there, Mint, Red Hat, um, OpenSUSE, the list is far too long to name them all. They're all Linux, 
The stuff we're going to be covering for the command line will actually work pretty much on any kind of Linux machine. It's not unique to Ubuntu. If you have a Mac, it'll actually, most of the time, with a few differences, it should work on your Mac as well if you open up the terminal on there. Um, Macs are based on a similar operating system to Linux based on. It won't work on Windows. The Windows terminal is completely useless. It has a totally different set of commands, so don't even waste your time. Um, but if you are using a Mac or if you are on Linux, then this command line stuff is pretty standard stuff that you should be able to use in either place. Any questions on what you can click on in Linux before you get into all of the stuff that you can't click on? All right. Feel free to like shout them out. Take the jokes up a level. All right. Well, while my desktop's slowly loading, uh, just out of curiosity, by show of hands, how many of you guys are in 1300? And how many in 2270? And how many in something else? All right. Gabe Johnson represents well. And how many of you guys have used Linux before? Okay. Cool. Well, we'll be taking it from the beginning this evening. Like I said, we'll get into more advanced topics in the upcoming weeks, and then especially after February is kind of focused on all of the intro topics, and then we get into kind of more exciting special so topics. Guess, uh, how far are we going to get today? Um, through all of the basic command line commands. Uh, so, you know, file manipulation commands, file system manipulation commands, stuff like that. We probably won't get much beyond that. We will see. We will see how much time I have. If this sounds like it's totally going to bore you, I won't be offended if you want. But you are welcome to stay if you think I can lighten it. All right, so let's try this again.